Hi there, welcome to our daily teaching video. Hey, in a moment, I'm going to share a piece of my new online course, The Spirit-Filled Life. This is a course, a 12-part course, on how to live full and how to live in the overflow of the Holy Spirit. More details, check out the link below, but I know this is gonna be a blessing to you. Hey, before we do that real quick, let me show three quick announcements. Number one, please do subscribe wherever you're watching this, YouTube, podcasts, lots of different places. Uh, I'd love to have you as part of our online community. Secondly, I have an email newsletter I send out every Friday with news, updates, free things, books I'm reading, travel news, missions, lots of different things like that and uh, you can sign up for that with the link below and we have a three hour teaching on how to hear God's voice. We'd love to get into your inbox when you uh, subscribe for our email newsletter. Lastly, let me just mention my ministry school. I have an online ministry school, ministryschool.net, that is aimed at helping believers develop and grow in their faith in God. This is a faith ministry school. Uh, we have lots of individual courses and a monthly subscription. We have a group, a private mentoring group that meets using a Zoom call once a month and has question and answer, lots of different things there. So do check that out before below. Right, let's jump into this lesson on the Spirit-filled life. Now, you know, in the Old Covenant, God gave Israel the law. And of course, the law was never designed to make people holy. The law was never designed to clean up people's act. The law was designed, if you will, as a framework for Israel to live by until Messiah would come. The law was there as, if you will, a prophetic image. When God gave the people of Israel the temple, the outer court, the inner court, the holy of holies, he, he was giving them a physical, visual representation of that which would go on in heaven. And I won't have time here today to go through all the elements of the temple. You know, a, really, a couple of really great resources. Derek Prince did a, a, an audio series years ago on the way into the holiest place. Uh, Andrew Murray wrote a book by the same title, uh, Study of the Book of Hebrews, The Way Into the Holiest Place. Uh, Terry Law, a wonderful man of God, went to be with the Lord two or three years back now, uh, wrote a book, How to Enter Into the Presence of God. And if you will, what, these, what, what Terry Law would do in his book, for instance, is lay out the articles of furniture and the, if you will, the pathway, the roadmap to get into the presence of God. And I want to go that with you, through that in, in a very simplistic way today. Just as we talk about worship, I believe we have been made holy in Christ. And what we've got to do is practice holiness. We've got to practice that in our choices in what we do, but that's not about self-effort. What it's really about is this abiding in the presence of the Holy One. And I believe if we learn in worship, I believe the ultimate goal in worship is not to have a cool band and a, a, an inspiring song and a light show and a smoke machine and all that. If you will, I believe worship, there is an outer court to worship, there is an inner court to worship, and there is a holy of holies in worship. And what we do in the outer court, the Bible says we come into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. And when we begin in worship and praise, it is, it is much more a physical thing. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. Pray, lifting up holy hands, dance. There is a physical aspect to that outer court of worship. There's a place in the outer court where we begin in worship, where we're thanking God for, we're celebrating what he's done for us. Look what the Lord has done. We're celebrating that he's brought us out of Egypt. He's cleansed us. He's sanctified us. We're celebrating and rejoicing in our God. If, if the church or, or as an individual, we will embrace that place of worship, what happens is there's a time the Spirit of God shifts us, excuse me, from, from praise, if you will, into worship. We go from praise and then into worship. And worship is much more related to the soul than the body. In worship, we're often just still before the Lord. In worship, it's more our emotions that connect with the things of God. In praise, we celebrate, we thank God for what he's done for us. In worship, we thank God for who he is to us. We exalt him. Worship is about intimacy. There's a difference between dancing and, you know, deep cries out and look what the Lord has done. And that place of worship where we're, like Mary, we're pouring out our soul at the feet of the Lord. Look, I love you, Lord. I exalt thee. Those are songs of worship. I think what the church often hasn't seen, though, is God wants to take us past, um, 
past praise into worship, which is like the inner court in the temple. But there's actually a holy of holies experience to worship. If you will, praise relates to our body, worship relates to our soul, but there is actually a worship in the spirit that I believe God wants to lead us into. And I, I don't think we can manufacture that, we can't switch it on, but if we'll praise and celebrate, the spirit of worship will come upon us. If we'll worship, there is a, a spirit of, of glory, Ruth Heffin used to call it. I'll, I'll call it that spirit of holiness, where God brings us into the very experience of the holiness of God, of the glory of God. It's interesting, when you're in the Shekinah glory of God, there's no work, there's nothing to do. We don't even need a song when we're in the glory of God. When we're in the glory and the holiness of God, it's like we are. We are, we're still, we abide. Now, again, I don't have the time to unpack this in great detail, but what I wanna to suggest to you is I believe in the days, weeks, months, years to come, both individually and the body of Christ, I believe we're gonna to learn to live from the holy place. I think so often we live out there in the world, we love God, but we're not even aware of him, or at times people bring praise into their life or occasionally worship. But I believe God wants a corporate group of people who stand in the glory of God, in that place of holiness. I believe we've seen individuals in the past who, who learned to live in that place. I remember once hearing a, uh, a bunch of the early Pentecostals said they all made a visit to Bradford to visit Smith Wigglesworth. And they were talking about Brother Wigglesworth and they'd say, you know, there's a place where he prays where you just need to get up and get out of the room because the glory of God comes into the room when he prays. And there was one kind of old timer who said, I'm not going to leave the room. I'm going to stay there with Wigglesworth and pray and just enjoy that whole time with God with him. And these people came to visit Smith Wigglesworth and as he was wont to do after a few minutes Wigglesworth would read his Bible and then he said let's worship the Lord let's pray together and people began praying and it was like like the story where the um, the woman caught in adultery from the youngest to the oldest people began getting up and walking out of the room and there was this again this old time of Pentecostal who was like no I'm going to stay here and and this old time he said after a while I just couldn't stay it anymore the glory of God it was like I couldn't breathe the holiness the glory of God was in the room and I just it's like I literally crawled on my knees and got out of that room and yet he said I looked behind me and Smith Wigglesworth was sitting there contentedly enjoying the Lord you know that same Wigglesworth would, would jump on a train jump on a train board a train and sit in a carriage and people would would turn to him and say you convict me of sin I feel dirty when I feel around you why he wasn't condemning them or pointing out the faults in their life. We bring people into the awareness of God to the measure that we are living in that awareness of God. So Holy Spirit is in us for fellowship, for, to love us, for his presence, for the gifts of the Spirit, for the fruits of the Spirit. But he's actually there to produce that work of holiness in us. And again, it's not, a, it's not something we've got to earn or work at. Rather, it's something we've got to work out. We, we need to put on this identity. I am a holy person. He is holy and I have been made holy. What I'm learning to do is live out the holiness of God. And what I'm learning to do is to dwell within the holiness of God and let the glory of the Lord shine around us everywhere we go. Selah. Thanks for making it this far, guys. I encourage you to put some of that into practice and maybe check out some of those resources. That book by Terry Law is really good. Uh, how to enter into the presence of God. We'll be back in lesson nine where we're gonna speak about the Spirit-filled church and some practical things we can do to allow the life of the Spirit to flow in and through our churches. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, remember, you can download the whole course. Uh, there'll be a link below on our website, ministryschool.net. have a special offer on this course at the moment, and I know it will be a blessing to you. Remember to hit the subscribe button, sign up for our email newsletter, and do check out our ministry and all the links below. Thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with another lesson.